Stratocut 101. The basic, the basic rule we must always remember is if a knife is cutting 90 degrees to a shape, and that shape is going straight back from the camera away from that knife, there's almost no animation going on. In this case, because this has been roughly put together, these lines are not precise. There's a little bit of animation, but that's mostly random. Uh, principle of animation 101 is as you move your lines to a 45 or to some other degree, you begin to get animation. You get motion from one side to the other, from left to right here. Um, and uh, the further you rotate a block, if you were anticipating your cuts to be like this, the more radical or advanced or fast ultimately that line would be moving across screen. So if you continue to move even more, this is like zipping across. And finally, if I were to line this up to um, the camera and begin to slice these, you would see a series of flash frames or somewhat um, slightly distorted flash puddles, if you will, because this isn't very straight. This block is fairly wobbly. You get sort of like one frame of a sort of a puddle looking shape, it's a certain color, and another frame, and then it's red, orange, yellow, white. And in a sense, it's a series of flash frames. So again, this is no motion the knife. This is a little bit of motion, very slow. This is a moderate amount of motion going from left to right. This is very fast motion. This is really fast motion. It's going zip. And this ultimately is just a flash frame going pop, 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 pop. All right. Um, if you can remember those, um, that concept, there's a second fundamental law aside from that, which is that um, if you were to take this and you rotate it, your line is getting thicker as you go along. So if I were to cut here, what appears to be a certain width of line here becomes actually a much fatter. This is the line from seen from above, but look at how thick this yellow line has gotten. Everything is now twice as fat as it was when you originally built the block. And if you were to cut even at a more radical angle, you could, the, the effect is really apparent. It's a distortion of, of uh, shape due to speed. The illusion of speed, the speed of the line moving, um, makes the shape distort. So that can be actually quite good and fun to use. Sometimes, though, it's bad and you actually need to pre-distort a lot of Stratocut is pre-distorting if you actually want to control your shapes and not just have them become whatever they're going to become. And you want something to move from one side of the frame to the next, you have to pre-distort it. So let's say this is a continuous line being cut this way. You want to actually have it move camera right or to your, to your left um, and then start to go again. What most people would do is actually sculpt it like this. And this would give us an enormously fat moment in the middle that would look like this, which would be very bad. So you need to pre-distort or think ahead of that and actually bend the curve to be about the same as you anticipate the shape to need. And this way, this amount of distance here is the same as this amount of distance here. And yet I'll to give you a concrete example of that. Pre-distortion. Um, this isn't a very good example, but it gets the point across. I'm just basically going to give the... I'm going to go ahead and push in the amount of distortion I think I'm going to need. And then I'm going to go ahead and curve it to the rhythm of the motion I think it will take. So this would be about right in my mind. If I were to want to have a series of stripe lines here that become a series of stripe lines there that move from one side to the other and in the middle 
they shouldn't look like they're a different set of striped lines, I'd roughly want to have this kind of a shape. Now, they're a little too skinny in this case, so that means what I need to do is increase my speed. Because I can't undistort it once I pushed it this, once I've clamped down on it and pushed it in, it's very hard to pull clay back over the parts. So the only choice I have to keep it consistent is actually increase the speed even more. See, I've done that just a little bit. I've actually advanced this line to here. Now this makes the shape even more distorted. And since I've made it so skinny, the time, the sort of speed shape relationship should hold. And um, here, let's try to get a clean cut on that. There, that's pretty close. So that was about the right amount of, of uh, speed or axis, angle of axis of, di of motion, which when you cut away is speed, it's the same thing. Uh, they equal each other, kind of like EMC squared only with clay. And these lines line up if you want them to be the same kind of width. I had to make this kind of a shape, that kind of distortion in order for that width to feel like it's um, still not, not changing. Uh, not changing. Now again, I can go back and simply do this, which would be what most people in their first try would do. They would just move a shape like this, right? They would just uh, have, they say, hey, it's the line over here, it's a line over there, it's going to move from left to right. And in the middle, it'll, it'll basically be a line that just gets really fat in the middle and it gets really skinny as it moves across. This is what I'm going to show you it does, you know going to go like that. Yeah. Um, and often if you're actually really trying to do figurative work or very controlled work, you don't want that. So pre-distortion is the way to actually counteract that to get motion in your block but not actually um, make it uh, ugly in the middle or out of control in the middle. Okay. A couple of other ideas. Strata Cut 101 is let's take some simple geometric shapes. This is a cone. A cone is actually a dot becoming a circle. It's a geometric shape. It can be cut in any kind of way you want. Uh, the most basic way to cut it would be top down, and this is basically animation built. It's uh, solid, it doesn't move. It's, c it's uh, potential animation, but it becomes kinetic animation at the moment you cut it. So if I were to take the first frame, I would have a small dot, and then I have a slightly larger dot, and I keep cutting it and I have an even bigger dot. Um, so a cone is basically a dot becoming a large circle in, in, its, in its geometry. You can cut it a lot of other different ways and I'm not going to cut it in those ways right now. I'm just trying to keep some simple ideas. Um, uh, similarly, a um, uh, pyramid, you know, go to Egypt, Go to Gaza. A pyramid is really a box, a tiny box becoming a very large square. Or should I say a tiny square becoming a very large square. So if I were to cut it like this, um, it would it would uh, change its shape to becoming to become a very um, tiny. So you can see all I'm doing is giving you simple concepts for growth in Stratica. That a simple shape can become another shape over time. This is now a box. Well, it's too distorted to really see the box. Probably by this cut you'll start to see it. That's probably a fair, a fair box even though it's not perfect. And this will be even better. Yes, it's very much a box. It's going to grow to become a larger box over time. Um, this is, of course, a square. Now, it can be cut in a myriad of ways. The interesting thing about a square is that if you were to cut it, it would be uh, a com more complicated shape. As it's rising up one side, it would move over and rise the other's way. Then the bottom would start to change its direction. It would go off and finish. So a square is actually not a simple shape. It may look like it's a simple shape, but you put it on its end, and it's quite, you know, of course, if you were to cut it this way, there's no animation whatsoever. You put it on an angle and it's a lot of animation. There's a lot of shape going on and a lot of interesting things are happening that are not easy at first glance to understand, but 
if you follow the contours, you'll begin to understand that it becomes a very, um, you know, that it's a triangle here. It's a skewed, skewed triangle, but then it becomes a quadrilateral, you know, it becomes a, a four-sided thing by the time you get here as you cut. And then it changes even further as you go further into it. So it's a fascinating thing. Any piece of geometry you look at is a potential piece of strata cut. Here's the circle. The circle um, is basically a, uh, it's a little bit like a cylinder, only it really isn't. Um, the curve of the animation, uh, it's not like a cone, but it isn't like a cone. The curve of the animation is actually exploding at the beginning and then tapering off in time. So, you know, you're, you're getting, if you were to look at it head on, you're getting a very large change in distance here, and then you're getting a very small, the next frames are a very small amount of increments. They're not changing much, they're just growing very slowly. So toward the edges, as I cut this, it would be a very, it would already start off as pretty much a circle. It would get very large pretty quickly. And as I continue to cut, it would be very slow, and then it would shrink back down. So there's this kind of like, boom, slow, whoosh, sucking back down. Um, one of the more interesting shapes, I think, is a disc. Um, it's basically a very compressed circle. If I were to take this circle and push it together more, the disc, like this, sort of a saucer, a spaceship, would um, be a highly exploding shape. So it doesn't take any time to get very big, and then it grows really quickly, and then it sort of tapers off and then disappears really quickly. And the beautiful thing about that, you know, with the disc, is as you cut it, it's like, as you cut it, it As you cut it, it's exploding quickly at the beginning, and then it tapers, then it goes sh shrinks back down. This is really good for fireworks or for explosions or for things where you want a high impact, where you really want <coughs> to happen. Um, so those are some basic shapes.